So, uh, Millet recently won uh, the uh, the election um, presidential in Argentina, and uh, a lot of people were very worried about his election because he's a uh, lunatic anarcho-capitalist who threatened to destroy the government, uh, dollarize the Argentinian economy, and do a bunch of other stuff. Um, I noted while looking at the stuff that he said and did immediately following his election that there were signs I saw that he might not be as bad as I initially expected. Now, to be clear, when I say not as bad as I originally expected, my original expectation was that within a few years, Argentina would just be a flaming pit in the ground. So some of the stuff that Malay did made me think that he was more interested in cozying up to larger governments around him than was initially expected. For one, if Mele argues that he wants to dollarize the Argentinian economy, that would mean he has to maintain a pretty good relationship with the United States, because you can only get dollars from the United States. He also seemed to be softening his rhetoric when it came to Brazil, the regional hegemon, and uh, softening his rhetoric when it came to uh, trade with China. What all of this suggested to me is that maybe he has been stabilizing a little bit, you know what I mean? Maybe you know, he said a lot of crazy shit while he was running, and now that he's in government, somebody went up to him and said, hey, listen, dude, okay, you've said a lot of stuff, but here's what you actually can do, you know? Here are the limitations of what you're actually capable, like, it, 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 this is the actual, like, shit you can do. This stuff is a no, no sell, you know? Maybe he took a bit of normal pills. I'm very, very sorry to say I was wrong. Um, uh, yeah. Argentina has been suffering some pretty severe economic issues recently, uh, hyperinflation, uh, protests as a consequence of inflation. And uh, Millet, the anarcho-capitalist, big anti-state power guy, has done the one big thing libertarians love to do when they actually get in power. <clears throat> Millet's government announces plan to crack down on Argentina protests. This is actually really bad. The Minister of Security, Patricia Bullrich, has presented a new protocol against street blockades as tension increases over the economic cuts announced this week. All right. After turning the chainsaw on the economy, um, is it Javier or Javier, by the way? The reason I kept saying Millet is because I hadn't checked. It's, I, I, I always hear Millet, Millet, Millet. You know, it's Javier? Javier, okay. Javier Millet. This government has announced its plan to crack down on protests. The new Minister of Security has announced a new protocol against street, uh, street demonstrations. We are going to bring order to the country so that people can live in peace. The streets will not be taken. Let them know that if the streets are taken, there will be consequences. This comes after the government's decision to devalue the peso by 50%. Basically, my understanding of this, it, and, and I'm no expert, but my understanding of this is that with hyperinflation, there was an increasing dissonance between the actual value of the peso in Argentina and the government recognized value. So what he's doing here is essentially going, well, the inflation's happened, inflation's inflation, whoop, and just like hit, hitting, hitting, the, hitting the peso with a hammer, you know? Um sort of uh attempt to uh att attempt to bring about parody that acknowledges the economic crisis but in a way that also kind of fucks a lot of people over this is a very complicated economic thing i don't want to pretend that i know everything about it i definitely don't um yeah no there there is a there is an argument to devaluing is what i have read but this is like an insane overreaction that is going to lead to uh immense suffering you know cheapest exports basically yeah 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 there's a lot of like international relations stuff that this plays into like a, a slight devaluing would be one thing 50 percent is insane so anyway the new protocol against demonstrations plans to group the four security forces, the federal police, the gendarmerie, the naval prefecture, and the airport security police under the Ministry of Security to break up protests at blocking streets and roads. That's the opening sentence, by the way. The new protocol unites the four security forces under the uh, uh, Ministry of Security to break up protests which should be treated and recognized, I imagine, with the same, uh, I guess, gravity of you reading the sentence, Donald Trump has fought against protesters by bringing the National Guard into direct line with the, uh, uh, you know, the, the DOJ 
uh, you know, like it, like we're this is an insane invocation, and the Marines, like like like, just yep, let's bring bring everyone in. Um, action will be taken until the circulation space is completely freed. Bullrick said the forces will use the minimum su sufficient force. I trust her, which will be graduated in proportion to the degree of resistance. You. You you never you, you never want to see this. We're gonna do some protest crackdown, okay? We're gonna use the minimum possible force. However, we will increase force proportionate to the degree of resistance. So don't think we're gonna keep it low, like you know, by default. We have already coded in the condition on which we'll just start shooting you. The minister and a former presidential candidate for the traditional right wing who allied with Millet after her defeat has appealed to one of the main concerns among her voters. The idea that street blockades generate disorder that does not allow people to live normally and in peace. Classic stuff, normal stuff. There are protesters, conservatives say, whoa, what happened to our peaceful? What happened to the thing we had before? Peaceful, orderly Argentina. That thing we had before, you know? We have lived for many years under total and absolute disorder, Bullrich said. It is time to put an end to this methodology to the extortion suffered by citizens. Federal forces will have the power to arrest those who, quote, commit crimes during protests and will be able to act on public transportation to seize protest materials such as sticks, sticks, and to investigate hooded citizens or those attending protests while trying not to be recognized. So to, to be clear here, they're not just breaking up the protests. They're also seizing materials and going after people whose faces are covered because they're trying to get IDs on people's faces. The only reason to go after people who have blocked their faces is because you're trying to use the surveillance state to record the people who are protesting against the government. You're, yeah, you're essentially doing like secret policing shit here. It's not just clearing the roads. It's making catalogs of, of, of state opponents. It gets worse. Bullrich has affirmed that a registry of social organizations that instigate protests will be created and that she will send the bill for the expenses of repression of those responsible. So if you're a progressive or anti-government organization, if you have in any way encouraged protest or civil disobedience, the state is now threatening to charge you for the no doubt exorbitant cost of security force deployment to break up these protests. The state is not going to pay for the use of the security forces. The organizations with legal status or the individuals will have to pay, said the minister, who announced that foreigners residing in the country with a temporary permit who participate in the uh, protests will be reported to the immigration services. So again, classic shit. Uh, we will uh, unmask you if you are masked, break up the streets, send the economic uh, cost to you, the people who, uh, 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 you know, provoke the protests or even are said to have. And if you're an immigrant, we'll deport you. They can demonstrate on the sidewalk. We do not want street or roadblocks, the minister said. This is not a problem of ideologies. It is a problem of understanding once and for all that the country must live in peace and order. Oh, man. The announcement came amid rising anger in Buenos Aires due to the economic adjustment plan presented by the, econo uh, the economy ministry on Tuesday. The government raised the value of the dollar from, 40, er, sorry, from 400 to 800 pesos, promised not to renew the contracts of public employees who have been in their post for less than one year and announced increases in the prices of basic services and public transportation. Is this worse or better than what Yanukovych did back in the Euromaidan? I don't think it's quite that bad yet, but there's still plenty of time for it to get worse. The increases promoted by the government will not be felt until February, according to Economy Minister Luis Caputo, but Argentina is used to remarking prices in the street in the face of political shocks. This week, prices in supermarkets have risen by up to 40%, after the end of the freeze on costs for basic groceries promoted by Pyrrhonism, we'll do that research dream one of these days, while well, the price of fuels has increased by at least 30%. We found a patient in intensive care about to die. We are not willing to let him die, the presidential spokesman Manuel Adorni said Wednesday. The labor unions and guilds responded with urgent calls for answers. All eyes are on December 20th, the anniversary of the 2001 Coralito crisis, when commemorative demonstrations are expected to take place in Buenos Aires in memory of the police repression that left 38 dead. So we're coming up on the anniversary of, yeah, like, police state 9-11. Uh, so we are, um, you know, we're, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. 
The guarantor protocol of Neil Degare is repealed, stated Bullrich at the end of her press conference, in reference to the rules governing police actions in the face of protests that was installed in 2011 during the government of Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner. Gare, who was a minister of security at the time, established some basic rules of engagement during demonstrations, such as police intervention being deployed in a progressive manner, starting with dialogue with the organizers of the protest. The Gare Protocol also established the prohibition of officers who might come in direct contact with the demonstrators from carrying firearms, that rubber bullets could only be used for defensive purposes, that all officers in their vehicles should be visibly identified, and that the police should guarantee free news coverage of protests without preventing uh, journalists from taking testimonials and photographs. She's repealing that. So the final thing that she said at her press conference was, hey, you know that giant set of like regulations that keep the police from doing police day shit? Gone. The guarantor protocol of Neil Degare is repealed, stated Willard at the end of her press conference. So she ended her statement on cracking down on protests by essentially saying, and by and we're not like following the and 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 the the you know the gloves are off essentially. Can they make this actually happen? I'm pretty sure they can do whatever they want. The president's order to crack down on the protest says, there is no order without liberty, and without order there is no progress. Here is the order's whole language. I am not an expert on Argentinian uh, legal authority. My understanding, if this is anything like the American system, is that everything that is happening here is under the purview of the executive branch, and that the legislative branch, if it can contest anything that is happening, will take time to do. But this all seems like it falls under executive privileges. That's not a legal statement. That was just a Nazi saying, oh, so you're saying that she is not officially revoking the Neil Degare protocol. She's essentially just saying we're going to ignore them. So that so this so this would be like saying this would this would be like Trump ending a speech by saying the First Amendment is repealed. Like he can't literally do that, but him saying that is basically a threat. No, that's not what I'm saying, okay? No, not that, the Liberty Order thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, because, okay, that's why we got, gotta be clear, you know? Okay, yeah, all right. So we are revoking the guarantor protocol. That's great, I love that. Didn't Trump's government try to charge people with sedition charges? Uh, well, no, that was discussed by the DOJ, but they didn't actually go through with it, thankfully. Yeah, so the problem with this is that I don't actually speak Portia Spanish geese, so I don't actually know what this says. It would be nice if I could. Uh, the bio here, the description says, President uh, Javier Millet announces a total crackdown on Argentine civil society, calling on armed forces to break strikes, arrest protesters, protect children from families that bring them to demos. See, I want a translation of this. And form a new national registry of all agitating organizations. Um, guys, I think, uh, you know, people say I use the term fascism too often. I don't know, guys. I'm feeling a little fashy here. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm registering it. I'm picking up, sort of swishing the wine around in my mouth. I'm getting light notes of fascism in this. Vosh, I'm Argentinian. 2001 was the worst event in our history. The police killed protesters. A loaf of bread costed a monthly wage. 80% poverty. The people who created that crisis are now the consultants of Millet. Yeah, that about tracks. Yeah, sorry guys. I think there's a solid 50-50 in Argentina uh, hitting uh, another dictatorship. Really sorry guys. You had a run with your democracy, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what can meaningfully challenge Millet at this point. Yeah, the 15th one. The literal first thing an anarcho-capitalist who wants to challenge state power does when he gets into power is it immediately crash the economy, then create a fascist dictatorship. It's per it's perfect. It's it's picture perfect. He's doing it faster than I thought he could have at the worst case scenario. I didn't expect it to happen this quickly, but here it is, you know? To be fair, their economy was already f Yeah, he doesn't seem to be helping, though. How bad are these protests getting? It, the, the fun thing is if you Google Argentina protests, you're going to get a continuous stream of news videos from every time period in the past two decades. It's great. Ah, do you, do you mean Argentina protests December 2023? November 2023? Uh, October 2023? September 2023? August 2023? So on and so forth. Is fascism okay or is it just... Fascism is not okay, is my opinion. Wait, apparently Argentina has already moved out of BRICS? Wait, they said they were going to join BRICS, but then they... Okay. I didn't realize that was on the table. Hold on.
This is the highest resolution video available in Argentina. I feel bad for you guys. I assumed because this was AP News that there would be some commentary, but you know. Wait, I saw a better video there. Give it to me. Here we go. El Estado Nacional no va a licitar más obra pública nueva y va a cancelar las licitaciones aprobadas cuyo desarrollo aún no haya comenzado. Como dije antes, no hay plata para pagar más obra pública que, como todos sabemos, muchas veces terminan los bolsillos de los políticos y los empresarios. El tipo de cambio oficial va a pasar a valer 800 pesos para que los sectores productivos tengan los incentivos adecuados para aumentar su producción. Vamos a reducir subsidios a la energía y al transporte. Pero como todos los argentinos ya se habrán dado cuenta, estos subsidios no son gratis, sino que se pagan. Dude, they are so fucked, man. Holy shit. For non-streamers, speak the words. This, this, guy, this is the Minister of Economy, and he's basically saying, okay, we're, we're having the value of the peso relative to the US dollar, um, and we're also going to make transportation more expensive, and everything is bad. ...con inflación. El presidente nos ha pedido que pongamos foco fundamental en la gente que más puede sufrirlo, ya que lo que vamos a hacer es aumentar, duplicar eh, el, el, el plan de asignación universal por hijo y aumentar en un 50% la tarjeta alimentar. Es decir, vamos a estar durante... En otras palabras, we are going to be worse off than before for a few months. Hmm. ...peor que antes, particularmente en términos de inflación. Y lo digo así porque, como dice el presidente, es preferible decir una verdad incómoda que una mentira confortable. So, again, my, my understanding, and I'm not an econ wizard, is that for most countries, the relative value of their currency is basically determined by how much of their currency is worth one US dollar. Because we are the global reserve currency, we are the biggest fish in the pond economically. Basically, every all value is weighed relative to the worth of the US dollar. Um, so by saying a US dollar is now worth 800 pesos rather than 400 pesos, what Mille is doing is incentivizing foreign investment and exports any kind of trade like that because now if an american you know buys anything or exchanges money or whatever any economic engagement between dollars and pesos now the dollar haver the american literally gets double the value yeah, it disincentivizes imports. Now, th now this is great if you're a foreign company that's looking to, um, like, get money out of this, you know, by, uh, you know, uh, by buying uh, Argentinian exports or whatever. There's, it's great if you're not in Argentina. Um, <laughs> however, uh, you know, it's um, not so great for the people there. It's done for exporting companies mainly, especially. Yeah, I guess I should say it's good for foreigners and it's good for the corporations in Argentina that are wealthy enough to export their goods. Because now the US dollars they get by selling their stuff are worth more in Argentina. Like, if you're a big corporation in Argentina and you sell... 1 million USD worth of stuff to an American company, the 1 million you now have is worth twice as many Argentinian pesos. It is essentially a move that massively enriches the wealthy. And that's it, you know, to the expense of other people. It's not good. Oxford Economy has made a harsh analysis of the Caputo plan. It says that Argentina will default in 2025. Holy shit. Reserves will run out and the fiscal deficit will rise again after falling 2.3% of GDP next year. Reserves will run out in 2025, making default unavoidable. The bond fair values remain in the 30 to 35 range. The current account deficit could shrink to 0.4%. I would, I would need to know more to like comment on how I feel about this, but this seems quite bad. It would represent a death spiral for the country if accurate. Oh man. And you know what that means? Economic turmoil means more... Um, so, uh, social instability and more social instability means um, uh, Millet gets to crack down on more protesters. 
How does a leader just change the value of their currency relative to the dollar? Oh, you can do that. Yeah. Why don't other countries do that, Lamau? Um, cool. There are consequences to doing it. Uh, you, you favor some groups and disfavor others. You can do that if you want to, and it does happen, but there is a kind of market equilibrium, which is determined by a very complicated set of factors. And if you fuck with that equilibrium, there are usually negative outcomes. We will see negative outcomes. Well, guys, look on the uh, bright side. Millet might burn the country to the ground before it has a chance to default. So Argentina's... F yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I thought there was a chance that Millet might chill out significantly and kind of uh, make it, make an effort to sort of uh, stabilize in conjunction with investment from and to uh, larger economies to, you know, chill out a little bit. It's possible that things would have gone that way if the economy wasn't already as f***ed as it is. Maybe it was never on the table. But, yeah. Yeah. 